back then and still now, and this is gonna sound creepy and it's really personal, but Shigo is fucking hot, okay? I really love Shigo as a villain and as a hot cartoon character. You know, I guess the saying goes, you know, once you go green, there's nothing in between. I don't, I'm sorry. Anyway, anyways, I think I heard that from a nostalgia critic review of The Grinch. Okay, but that's beside the point. Um, God, how long have I been talking? It's 1.56, so damn near an hour. Damn near an hour. This is going to be a long video. Now, with... I can go on forever about these shows, okay? But Disney Channel in general. And I might do a top five or ten worst Disney Channel shows, but I'm, I'm not really... I don't really... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm not going to do it right away if I do to, to consider it. But with Kim Possible, God, you have so many great episodes. There's... The, the, what was that name of that camp they went to that Ron really hated because I think he saw somebody drown and turn into a mutant and he does come back. And fucking, God, that was creepy actually. And, God, there's the Christmas special for that show where Dr. Draken is actually getting along with them. They're all singing Christmas carols watching an old cartoon that Ron and Dr. Draken apparently like. It was so crazy. It was so many memorable characters. Uh, I still I remember the name of the restaurant that Ron loved to eat at. What was it called? Bueno Nacho or something like that? Bueno Nacho? God, okay, maybe I can't remember it. I think I have it down, though. God, and the Bonnie, um, the cheerleader at school, was such a bitch. Again, kind of hot, I guess. I don't know. The mom. Kim's mom's kind of hot. The dad was kind of funny. Pretty smart. Had his cool moments. Um, the, her twin brothers, and yeah, well, I didn't really care for them, but, you know, Wade, who, like, never leaves his room, he's like me. Damn it. Okay, sorry, uh, but, you know, he always, he helped out a lot in the communicator. I know somebody at my school who has boop, 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 boop as their ringtone from whenever they get a text. That's pretty fun. I should do that. <laughs> but, you know, you know the communicator, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know. But, I can just talk about the tiny details that probably no one remembers or even talks about when they make these type of lists. Because I don't really go over big stuff, as you can tell by this list. And you might not like this video for that. I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> but, I really make these videos for me and my friends. Not because I want to get a partnership. It would be cool to make money doing this, but I don't even have enough subscribers or views for that. Like I said, I only do these for my friends. I have very little friends. My last video got like 8, 9 views maybe. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks. Anyways, I do appreciate the guys who do watch. <laughs> they did watch those, thank you. But anyways, oh well, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not in for a popularity contest. You know, like I said. But, Kim Possible. God damn. That was such a great show. But now, number one. Fuck that drum roll. Anyways, number one has such a big impact on me. I remember watching it from when it first premiered when I was seven years old. That was damn fucking 11 years ago. I feel old, and I shouldn't feel old at 18, I guess. <clears throat> Anyways, God. And I'm not trying to sound racist, but, you know, not a lot of white people in the South tend to have a crush on a black girl. But, at least, at least not, maybe not even out of their village. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, 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 I like, I don't see race. I've, I've been interested in white, blacks, Asian, Mexicans, Indians, Native Americans. You know, you know, I guess... You know, race doesn't matter to me when it comes to girls and stuff, so... And it shouldn't, to anybody. But, my first black girl crush... Well, I guess I better say the name of the show first. Number one, if you don't know by now, it left a very big impact on Disney itself. I think it made Disney the greatest thing. I mean, you know, better than Zack and Cody and Kim Possible. It's That's So Raven. Now, Raven Simone, like I said, the first black crush I ever had, but not the last. She's like, isn't she 29 or 30 now? And she came out as a lesbian not too long ago. I mean, good for her. I support the LGBT community. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, man. 
then again, I never had a chance with her anyways, but, <laughs> you know, um, so, but that's the Raven, they dealt with issues, serious issues as well, as, you know, oh, like, Raven was going for some kind of cover on a magazine, she was a fashion designer, she, you know, remember, she was a psychic, too, and, um, you know, she, you know, see, I have a problem, this is why I have to script some of my vlogs and stuff, but, you know, there was that episode where she tries to go out for a uh, modeling thing, where she's on a run, like, a walkway, or what the hell is it called, a runway, something, you know those models walk on, and they take pictures, they were, they were going to put her on a magazine, in a magazine, on the cover, or something like that, and they said she was, like, too fat, even though she's not really fat, but you know how, you picky, you know, you have to have the anorexic type, <sighs> fucking, you know, it's kind of like, you know, in real life. And she she gives this great speech about, you know, it don't matter, you know, all people come in different shapes and sizes and that they're all beautiful. And that was a really good thing for Disney to do. And especially, you know, on such a comedy show. And there was some serious issues. There was that episode where Chelsea, you know, her dumb ass white friend, God. And, the, and even though I think this was a perfect show for Disney Channel standards, to be nitpicky, I kind of hated Chelsea. She had her funny moments, but she fucking got annoying a lot. At least to me. But, that's beside the point. So, you know, she was a dumb bitch. They were trying to apply for this job at a store, and both Raven and Chelsea applied. Chelsea was definitely not qualified. Raven was definitely qualified. And isn't it kind of weird how you might not get a job if you're overqualified? If someone's overqualified, wouldn't that just make it even more better? But, yeah, whatever. I don't... I'm not the man, man. But whatever. I don't run the world. <laughs> Anyways, I just kind of sound like a hippie there. I don't care. Look what I'm wearing. So... And I'm in my pajamas as well. So... Yeah, the, there's... They get... They uh, have a secret camera in Chelsea's hat. And she's like, she's like why, why don't you consider Raven? And then that, the white girl's like, well, I don't, I don't hire black people. And that got on the news and the show, and she, she got fired. And there were some serious issues with that show. There, I think the Black History episode where Corey got Corey, dude. And that dude was crazy. He was funny. Well, not crazy, but he, he was richer than his parents. He was the richest person in that family. He was always coming up with schemes to make money. He hired his own assistant at some point, and when he ever he wanted him to do like his homework for him, then he quit, which is a smart thing to do. Don't take anybody's shit, okay? Especially when it's coming from a 12-year-old boy, and you're like a guy in his 20s or 30s, you know. Even though, yeah, I imagine he made mad bank yo. I don't know why he talked like that. I just did for some reason. But you know, that was a funny episode as well. You know, he's like, I don't, I don't think you should be, you know, hiring, you know, making me do your homework. I didn't, I don't see thinking on your resume. Then he's like, I quit. It's like, check that on my resume. <laughs> Quitting, you know, whatever. But, you know, even the side characters could be funny. God, that episode with the babysitter who hasn't babysit them since they were little kids. And they didn't hire her for a long time because, um, she was a pushover. And they ate. Like, their mom's birthday cake and blame it on the babysitter. And she accepted the blame because pushover Patty, I believe her name was. And then they come back and the mom and dad were pranking her, pranking Corey and Raven. But they didn't know about it. Even when Raven had a vision of her dad talking on the news or, some, you know, whatever, she didn't get the part where they revealed it was a prank. So she thinks, like, they were going to get killed or something. And they literally tried to make it where like she did like want to kill them. She was stalking. It was really creepy. They had these fake newspaper ads in her purse. It's like mental babysitter breaks in my prison. It was, there was some freaky shit on this show. And who remembers the boys in motion? There was that boy band they were into. I think they were in like two or three episodes. But God, there's so many memorable episodes. Some with good messages. Some with just good jokes. And... You know, Stanley, good characters, even if they were minor, or only lasted a few episodes. Stanley, God, he was that little kid, 
I can't remember. He went on. That actor went on to do one of the characters for the Cloudy, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball movie, I believe. And he had his own show on Cartoon Network for a while. I can't remember what it was. But Stanley, God, he, he, you know, like when a little kid is starting to like have a crush on someone, like they could be like double digits, but not you know, like 13 or anything yet, and they're starting hitting on older women. I think we're all guilty of that at some point, like me. And okay, that's personal. Anyways, <sighs> Stanley would hit on Raven so much he actually thought they were going out. They were not, obviously. That'd be weird. And there was that one episode where she has like literally the the perfect boyfriend, and she she has to read to these freaking kindergartners or whatever. I don't fucking know. That not kindergartners, but Stanley was there, and that guy comes in and checks on it, and it's like, how's it going? And then like kiss, and he's like. You're like, you, you better back off with my woman, you know, whatever, like that, something like that. And he, like, move over, Freckles, and he points at Raven, that's all mine. It's really, he was a great kid. He was annoying in the right way. So, he was annoying where you loved him, instead of annoying, and that's why you hated him. And, God, the dad was pretty funny, the chill grill, I remember the name of the restaurant. Um, there was that episode of the chill grill on Will's, at Corey. You know, he didn't. He thought his dream, the dad thought Corey's dream was to be a chef like him, but really he just wanted to make good money. You know, yeah, I guess Corey grew up to be the man. After all, they did go live in the White House, remember that? That wasn't that great of a show. <laughs> uh, God, there's so many funny episodes. I can, I can remember most of the episodes, and I want to talk about them, but again, this video is long enough as it is these videos and my god you know that's the raven it's just the best show it's still the best show ever it's the greatest it was probably the best show back then well at the time when Zack and Cody came along I thought that was the best show but now being more older and more mature about it I do believe that's the raven was the best show Disney ever did I even had some of the episodes on DVD at some point I think I lost them that sucks I really need to order those off Amazon or something if they still have them, if they're available. <laughs> they should be, but... God, there's that, those episodes, the Thanksgiving episodes where they go... Raven and Chelsea go to the or the country, and like three or four of the characters were played by Raven Simone herself, and she was famous for putting on weird costumes and disguises on that show. Like, when there was an episode where... Corey was stole a monkey keychain, and he had a weird nightmare about that in, in that episode. I don't even want to get into that. But Raven put on a security guard outfit, and she was trying to be a male one. She had the fake mustache and everything, and the, it was too big. And, like, she kind of keep going, you know, you know, whatever. And, and it's just some really random situations that, in a way, could actually happen. It was a... Really, like, she was a psychic, so that's not real. That's obviously not real. And if you believe there are such things as psychics, there's something wrong with you. But that's beside the point. Um, but some of these things that happen in the show could be real. That could actually happen to somebody, maybe. I don't know. It's pretty cool how they do have a good line of real... Re they, you can know, relate to some of this stuff. And the very last episode, probably not controversial, but most notable... Because they did, okay, I guess somewhat controversial what they were talking about, smoking cigarettes. Now, personally, I don't care if you smoke. That's your business, whatever. But you should at least know what you're getting into, and you shouldn't be underage either. Well, then again, even then, you know, there's high schoolers that aren't 18 yet that smoke, and I don't care. Smoke cigarettes, weed, whatever. Again, I don't really care. That's not my business. But, you know, you should at least know the side effects and what could happen to you or what will happen to you whatever and that was like it was actually Corey's girlfriend what was her name Susie something she was uh, I think she was smoking them and then they fell in like Corey's pocket or whatever he took them he took him them from her and when she was doing when Raven was doing Corey's laundry she found finds him and oh I just remembered the greatest character well not the greatest character but one of the greatest side characters from the show the juicer the juicer man he I remember I, I think a few minutes ago I said I was about to wrap this up I'm not am I the juicer you know going off memory the juicer he literally get juice out of anything